Let's talk about the integrated value chain between ePlan and Retail. On one side, you have our software, ePlan. In ePlan, if you create a project here, very easy. I'm going to create a project using Cogineer. So technically, I'm starting the whole thing with a macro. Macros have a Cogineer configurator behind the scene. And here I'm going to pick a couple of options, let's say 600 volts with AT, no AT, or RS, and I'm going to generate my schematics. So this is typical ePlan to create schematics when you have a standard uh, controls. You don't need this anymore. I'm going to go back here and show you what I just created. I just created these pages here, one, two, three, four pages that were created, typical PLC, a typical power supply, typical uh, PLC unit, all cool. So now let's place it on a panel, on 3D, on Pro Panel, to create the digital twin. But before I do so, I'm going to switch over to our Rital configuration system. So how does that work? The Rital configuration system, here are the RICs. RICs allows us to pick the correct size and part numbers. And based on several different options here, my first option I would like to pick is either a 24 inch or a 30 inch um, width. And I would like to have something that is roughly in those sizes. So you can see here on the right hand side, it actually narrows down the filters and it tells you, okay, you have a 24, 24 here. This is an interesting one. I'd like to use this AX. I could use it in wall mount format. I want to use it as AX. Go to the next step. And it's going to ask me a couple of more questions, but specifically to this previously selected box. So I want to use here an eight millimeter square. Cool. I want to use the hinges uh, 180 degrees. That's also added. And of course, you can go down and pick whatever you want. Go to the next selection. Here we have a few part numbers. You can see anything else. No, let's move to the order. And this will give me a small bill of material. I can even save as a CSV file. When I do so, this CSV file is interesting because I can reuse it in ePlan and do something with it. So let's take a look at this CSV file. Is it exactly as I want it? So I'm just going to explain to you what we have here. We have the order number. We have the description. Let's just call it description. We have some other information here. I'd like to enhance this here and maybe even add something more first thing i want the ePlan part number that is on our data portal and second i want an erp number so how does that part number work in ePlan? we concatenate very often the manufacturer's code name so the manufacturer's code name in this type in case is retail dot of course and we add the order number so all we have to do is complete this like this and we have the exact order number as we recognize in ePlan. here what i'm going to do is i'm going to call it rick's project let's say an for one of my friends and there we go so there we go an one two three four four projects four erp numbers very distinguished i can find them cool just save it I can even close it if I want to. I don't need it at this point. It's just a file that was saved. Uh, as you can see here, I'm going to go back now in ePlan inside the parts management. Inside the parts management, we can see all the different parts that we have. And in these, the system, I may or may not have already these parts. I'm going to check it out and import a CSV file, this particular CSV file. And as it is imported, how do I find them? Well, based on that rix.an ERP number that I created. So you can see here, these are all the four parts that were imported on this occasion, on this particular case here. I can see by the description that they were already known, but I can still check if on the data portal something is newer. And of course, at this point in time, if I check them out, all my parts are up to date. I don't have to do anything else it's all up to date so all the parts are there this is cool i can close the data portal at that point and start inserting my enclosure now if i don't remember what the enclosure was because i don't remember all those parts only this uh friend of mine he knows all these parts by heart and he does just 
call up all these numbers one by one. Rick's actually helps me, so I'm not as smart as him, of course, in the parts, but I, I sort of uh, can find out the right part numbers. Now, in this case here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add maybe some standard um, here, docks and rails, see what this gives me. So I'm just going to keep the, the naming convention I had, and I'm going to start placing the parts or the devices that were originally in my schematic. So let's start with the first one. It's maybe a terminal strip here, DB1. Uh, the other terminal strips I may want to place are going to be placed down here. That's a good one to be placed. Um, is there anything else? No terminal strips anymore. Maybe a uh, PLC, a PLC system. Uh, just drag and drop it, right? Always just pick the part, just drag, drop it, see if it actually fits. If it fits, it fits. Then even perfect, you can see. And interestingly, also is when you have some components that um, are like this component here, these components, um, maybe one or two, just drag and drop it. When you place it actually on a rail that is not in the same orientation, it actually pops in the other orientation. The other thing it does when you have like an overload, like this overload that is supposed to be uh, plugged into this one here, you just have to get it close to the attachment point that I want, the OLR, and boom, you can see it actually places there. And everything we do here is actually done in 3D, right? So uh, it's, it's, it's really, when, when you look it up, it's all 3D. So of course I work on the front view. Uh, let's put some drives. Uh, do I have one drive, two drives? I'm not too sure. In this case, I only have one drive. So let's place this drive. Let's place it maybe here. This is cool. I'm going to align it just here. That's good. What else do we have? Well, we most likely will have a couple of circuit breakers. Some of these circuit breakers are uh, three-pole circuit breakers. So here I can choose whether I want to put them at the very top here. There is some room, but let's see if it actually fits. I'm not sure. I might be a little bit squeezed, so I might be better off if I place it here. So it's a little bit personalized, but it's perfect. I can live with that. Let's see what else we have. We have a couple of um, other circuit breakers that are very specific to the power supplies we have. So we can put the circuit breakers first or we can uh, put the power supply. So basically here, this is the power supply, and then we have a control relay. Um, all of these components, I believe, uh, do fit, um, not the push button, but where's the power supply? This is the one, okay? All of these objects or devices, I can just drag and drop them, and you will see it even will allow me to place them there. And I can see that there is a small collision here. I'm not exactly fitting it inside this. I will have to eventually move some of these. So maybe let's wait for two seconds. Maybe I, I will move this object down or not, depending on what else I, I do have to place. And I don't, I'm not too far away. This one here, I believe, is a very, very tiny component. And it actually still fits in here. So I'm going to make it fit right there. That's perfect. I have some of these devices. I have one I can place right next to my uh, power here, maybe on the other side to give it a little bit of air. This is inductance. And what else do we have? Well, we have one object left. It's the transformer here. And the transformer perfectly fits well there. Why don't we put the transformer right in the middle? We take this guy, we just move it there because that's the uh, power on one side and that's the power on the other side. So this makes it nice and clean. Uh, of course, in this case here, we could move this over uh, to the left-hand side. We could move this one over to next to it. So just you know, leave some space. So we still have some space left. And last but not least are the push buttons on the front door. But before I do so, I just want to show you something. In ePlan, we also have the option to generate the wires. So it automatically generates the wires uh, with the wire length. This is the routing in uh, production. Very cool feature because 
really in 3D, you are looking at all the wires, which actually calculated the wire length. Not only this, when you do place some components on the front door, because remember, we have a front door here of this component. It's not just made of the back plate, it's also the front door. We can have maybe, let's, let's put just one for the moment, but the other ones can follow later down the road. When I'm placing these objects, right, on the front door, I usually do not see what's behind. So you can turn on what we call a collision check, and the collision check will basically control if it actually fits. So if I do fit it right there, let's take a look, um, you e-plan will still see in the background that it does fit. Maybe here I would have had a little bit more of an issue, but here it fits fairly well, okay? So this being said, this actually creates also for ePlan all the information about the drilling in view, view and, and that's all part of what came with the system. And that's even cooler because now I can generate all my fabrication reports. Now, when I say fabrication reports, I always think about the whole integrated value chain. So more precisely, what do I have to do when I fabricate a panel? I have to pick the parts in the kitting phase. I have to cut all my ducts and rails. I have to pre-drill the back plate, the front door. I have to assemble my terminals. Once this is done, I have to install the terminals and the devices. Also, putting some labels on these devices and the terminals. The labeling is to be done. Then I can actually concentrate on the wires, so wire fabrication and wire landing. And at the end of the day, of course, there's a little bit of testing and logistics to be done. So how can I organize my data or my reports? I have nothing to do. It's already pre-arranged in ePlan. I just run here to summarize reports and bingo, you get everything generated. What it generates is a kitting list for the step number one. I call it Efficient Engineering 01, which is EE01. So I have a small document specifically for the kitting guy. Then I have other documents for EE02, which is the mechanical uh, cutting of ducts and rails. So you imagine yourself going down to the grinder and grind these ducts and rails in the right lanes. And of course, for every other step in this loop here, I have a specific document. Here, for instance, is my kitting document. So I can see a picture, I can see the device tags, I have everything there. I have my labels ready, right? And the labels can actually be even better than this. I can take this project and dump it over to the Phoenix Contact complete project. And here I can get my wires, my cables, and everything in one single step. So what that does, it creates pretty much all the labels for me and I don't have to do anything. And, and all the labels are exactly the labels that actually come out of my system. Not one extra label, not one label missing. It's all exactly just right compared to what is in my project. The wires are there, the devices are there, and the cables are there, all in one single stroke. There's no reason when you use ePlan not to do so. You can see here, these are all the wires. And I even added the source and target on those wires. This is nice. Then if you drill down a little bit, you have other wires here. These are the cables. I have a few cables and these are my devices. Now this can be processed right away. Okay, this is a clip project Phoenix contact and it basically took the data from my project. If I return to my project, remember when I told you I created a document specifically for the cutting, of my rails, here are every every single rail and dock with precisely the length in millimeters and inches, regardless of what tape he's using, he can cut them. The next step, of course, once he has done the ducts and the rails, you go to the NC drilling. Here is the NC drilling data. The NC drilling data, even better, uh, is if you can organize yourself with the retail guys, they have a machine called Rital Perforex. The Rital Perforex will automatically require the door and the back plate, and it will actually drill it right away. Okay, so this is the mod center that you can uh, use from Rital uh, systems. Another thing that we have is the wire. The wire now has a specific length to a certain degree, and I can pre cut it. Now, if I can pre-cut it, I can save a lot of time cutting, crimping, 
and putting the labels on. Why? Because there is a wire fabrication, wire terminal from Retail that can do it. Okay, here you go. So really, if you want to be efficient, consider this, consider each line, consider importing from the RICs, which will give you the correct part numbers, and you will ensure save some time and have the per perfect digital twin created out of this. This was Roland from ePlan. I hope this was some interesting video again. Thanks.